players who have made 2,000 runs or more and taken 200 wickets or more. These are the all-rounders in the history of the game. First to do it, Richie Benno, this is chronological. Then Gary Sobers, Ian Botham, Kapil Dev, Imran Khan, Richard Hadley, those four of them in the 80s, the greats of the game at that stage. Wazi Makram, Sean Pollock, Shane Warne, more runs than people might have thought. Chris Cairns, a very good record in only 62 matches. Chimin Devas from Sri Lanka, Dan Vittori, the list goes on. There are 16 of them in all, Jacques himself, and Anil Kumble, Andrew Flintoff, Harbhajan Singh has just become the most recent player to achieve that, 2,000 runs and 200 wickets. Now, we've put in two other players that we think would have been in, in the echelon. Keith Miller, whose record is remarkable, very similar to Imran Khan, averages about 38 with the bat and 22 with the ball, that's fantastic. Didn't play enough test matches to take more than 170 wickets. And Tony Gregg, who has an outstanding record himself. We've, we've put those two in as much for interest, and we ought to mention the South Africans, Mike Proctor alongside me, Clive Rice and Eddie Barlow, who again didn't have the, the test matches you know, that, that would have allowed them to complete the stats. Tell us about Sobers. You played with him in a World Eleven, didn't you? Yeah, what was very interesting, 1970 when the, the South African tour was, uh, was cancelled and uh, the English board decided to have a rest of the world via uh, England Test Series and England had a very good side, Ray Ellingworth was captain, I think he came to Australia and won the Ashes, I think Chapelli, you were the captain then, so they had a good side and uh, the day before the game we had, a, we had a practice and we were practicing and all keen and Eddie Barlow was running around and giving catches and geeing everyone up and so be strutted as he'd normally that beautiful walk of his strutted across and chatted to all the guys in his in his service of course he wasn't he wasn't practicing we got in had a bit of a chat next day he got 180 during the match he got a six for in the first innings i think <laughs> about two or three in the second he took four catches around the corner unbelievable effort cheers guys we'll see you at trent bridge for the second time best all-rounder well of course it's a very subjective thing what are the criteria though that make a great all-rounder chapelli well i think should be able to bat in the top six or you know be one of the four frontline bowlers uh, if you only concentrated on one or the other I, that's mine and yours well it's interesting we've discussed it a lot over the years and i would say to be the top echelon the best the greatest all-rounder or be one of the greatest all-rounders you must hold your own either as a batsman or as a bowler so if you're an all-rounder you bowl and you bat you could get into a test team as a pure batsman or you could get into a test team yeah. as a pure bowler. Which is sort of Ian's point, and you want match wins. You want the guys who win you games. I think that's an important thing. What we've done with these two and with our commentators and with experts around the place, we've narrowed it down to eight. Jack Callis, first up in our eight, Keith Miller, Ian. Mate, I grew up watching him. My father used to take me to the Adelaide Oval and he'd say, watch Miller, look what Miller's doing. You copy Miller. Well, not many people could copy Miller. He was, he was brilliant and he was very easy to watch. 38 with the bat, 22 with the ball, his average. That's quite remarkable. Gary Sobers in. Well, he, he could just do everything. I had the good fortune as an 18-year-old to play with him in the South Australian side, and uh, he, he could just do anything he wanted. I think in those uh, three seasons for South Australia, he, he averaged something like 100 runs per game and took six wickets per game. And he, he did it swing bowling, uh, as you said, left arm orthodox and also the Chinaman. He could do anything. Hit him from miles and, and, and uh, he used to get Jeffrey Boycott out with that in swing. We all, we all <laughs> used to enjoy, enjoy that as I remember. Uh, we're moving on to Imran Khan, Mike, 38 with the bat, 22 with the ball himself, just like Miller. Yeah, magnificent all rounder. Imran Khan, I think a bit underrated, I really do. I was fortunate enough to play county cricket against him, played World, World Series cricket, Kerry Packer stuff uh, on the same side. and. Uh, Magnificent bowler, deep thinker of the game, and a good attacking batsman. You know, he could come in and, and if the situation warranted it, he would play circumspectly. Otherwise, he could give it a whack. And throw in his captaincy as well, Imran Khan. Absolutely. Right. Fair comment. Won the World Cup as captain of Pakistan. Kabul Dev at the wicket there. Well, you were talking about match winners. I mean, I guess we'll always think of that game at, so where was it, Tunbridge Wells against um, Zimbabwe in the what, 5 for 15 when he came in. He got 170. And, and uh, he captained India to the World Cup victory that year, 1983. But a terrific swing bowler, lively in his early days, lively-ish enough to bowl good bounces, and certainly with the bat, very dangerous. Richard Hadley, unerringly accurate, almost clinical in the way that he could examine and expose any batsman's technique. A famous performance here, of course, for 
New Zealand, Martin Crowe taking the catch there, but he had it all as a bowler and was a terrific striker of the ball when he batted. And I think became better late in his career as a batsman. He started to make a couple of hundreds uh, very late in his career. His batting really improved. He went from being a bit of a hitter to a, a, a pretty decent batsman. We're moving to uh, Ian Botham uh, in a minute, Mike, and you loved him, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, he was, he was an absolute uh, superstar all round. I mean, his, his bowling there, we see he bowled, he bowled high action, got the ball to move away. That one came in a bit, Fox the batsman, and he was, if ever there was a match winner, it was beefy. I mean, who would ever forget what happened against Australia at Leeds when he won the Test match, batting at a huge rate of knots, very, very quickly doing that on a regular basis. And who would ever forget that, um, what he did here at Brisbane in a famous Test match innings too. Sean Pollock, who you saw grow up really, didn't you? You knew his dad, you knew his uncle, but you saw him grow up. And what a fabulous performer he really was. Unfortunately for him, South Africa had a good batting side and I always think he, should have, he would have made more runs and obviously scored more centuries if he had batted up the order because he was a talented best Oh, he could bat. Yeah, he's a good bat. Well, outside, of, pretty well. outside of that talented group, we might have had Procky himself, as we said, those South Africans, Rice and Barley. We might have had Richie, might have had Flintoff, Akram, Tony, Greg, Cairns, Vittori, even Marshall and Warren, who were known more as bowlers. What we've got to do now is put you both under real pressure, right? We want you to name your top five ever and ideally in order, starting with you, Ciappelli. OK, well, Sova's number one, no contest. I've got Miller number two, um, Jack Callis three, Imran Khan four. Then I tossed up between Kapil Dev and Botham. I think uh, Kapil Dev was a better bowler for longer, Botham the better batsman of the two, and in the end, I went for Botham in my fifth spot. All right, and yours? I agree with Chapilli. So Garfield Sobers, to me, undoubtedly number one, Jack Callis number two, Ian Botham number three, Imran Khan number four, and Sir Richard Hadley number five. Right, Sir Richard Hadley. So we have, a, we have one non-crossover. It sounds to me like we have to make a choice, don't we, here? Is it a choice between who we got to choose Hadley between? Miller. Keith Miller no. and Hadley. Richard Hadley. I'll adjudicate, and because he averaged 38 with the bat and 22 with the ball, and we're in Australia, I'll go with Keith Miller. There's our top five, then. Our top five. Vodafone viewers' verdict after the break.